The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Chen Yu Yo, Form 1 Physics teacher. In the last lesson, I ended by giving an assignment. And the assignment was to, question 1, State at least five branches of physics. Two, which branch of physics is concerned with each of the following? Roman one, production of X-ray photographs. Roman two, manufacture of mobile phones. Roman three, lighting of our homes. For the correction, five branches of physics are mechanics, heat, light or optics, sound and waves. Question 2, Roman 1. X-ray photographs are concerned with waves. Manufacturing of mobile phones is concerned with electronics. Lighting of our homes is concerned with electricity. <laughs> Straight away, we will delve into lesson three, which is scientists and inventions. We will treat this lesson according to the following. We will have objectives, prerequisites, problem situation, activity, summary, application exercises, and assignment. By the end of this lesson, you, the learner, should be able to state the meaning of a scientist, state the characteristics of a scientist, state at least two examples of Cameroonian scientists and their inventions, state three other examples of scientists and inventions, and state the steps which lead to an invention. To fully understand the content of this lesson, you should be able to define science, state at least four branches of science, and link some branches of physics to some aspects of daily life. Testing that prerequisite knowledge, we have question one, which is asking for you to define science, two, state at least four science subjects that you know. Three, state the branch of physics concerned with each of the following. Cooking, running. For question one, the answer is, science is the systematic study of nature. Question two, the answer is, four science subjects are physics, chemistry, biology, and geology. Three Roman one, cooking is concerned with heat. Roman two, running is concerned with mechanics. We'll now look at a problem situation. We all know that we have electric bulbs that we use in our homes. There are mobile phones, there are airplanes. So the question is, who are the people who discovered or made these things? Who are the people who discovered or made these things? The one thing that all these people who discovered or made these things have in common is that they are scientists. 
So the question now is, who is a scientist? Who is a scientist? So a scientist is someone who conducts scientific research to advance knowledge in an area of interest. A scientist is someone who conducts scientific research to advance knowledge in an area of interest. To conduct scientific research means to find out something about science. To advance knowledge in an area of interest means to come up with new knowledge in that area. So another definition of science is that, or scientist is that, a scientist is someone who finds out things in science in order to come up with new knowledge. So take notes of these definitions of a scientist. Now, when scientists come up with the new knowledge, they can even go as far as using this new knowledge to come up with processes or equipment that help in solving problems in daily life. The scientist is able to come up with processes or equipment which suffer in daily life is called an inventor. So an inventor is someone who uses knowledge to create a new process or equipment used in solving a particular problem. Those new process or equipment are called inventions. A good scientist is supposed to have some qualities. So what are the qualities of a good scientist? There are so many here, we're going to name just a few. And the first one we have there in the list is that a good scientist is supposed to be curious. So a good scientist is always wanting to find out, always observing things around, always curious, always asking, always seeking things, always wanting to know how things and why things are happening around him or her. A good scientist is careful. A good scientist makes, doesn't, doesn't make many mistakes. So a good scientist is careful. A good scientist is patient. Meaning that if a scientist is a good scientist, if he fails the first time, he doesn't give up. Continues trying until he has the, the result. A good scientist is truthful. Doesn't tell lies. And a good scientist also has an idea in other fields. He's not only limited to one, one field, he has ideas in other fields. Like a good scientist in physics should have an idea in other fields like chemistry, biology, for instance. A good scientist communicates well. As a, as a scientist, in certain situations, you'll find yourself working with other scientists. And to work well, you should be able to communicate with those other scientists. So communication skills are very important in, in science. A good scientist is disciplined. Always at the right place, at the right time for the right activity. A good scientist is organized, not scattered, organized. Examples of scientists and their contributions to science or inventions are given below. The first example we have there is Professor Victor Anomangu, who is or who was a Cameroonian researcher as of late, and he worked on research in cancer and HIV AIDS. He invented Vanivax, which is used against HIV AIDS. And you know HIV AIDS is a disease that has killed so many. So when he came up with these discoveries, he reduced the rate of, of death. It's unfortunate that he died before he finished his research. It was the process of improving on that vaccine. The next is Patrick Lemugna Ninla, another Cameroonian. He developed the laterite-based eco cement, which is used in building. This scientist he discovered that there was a problem in the cost of building houses in Cameroon, and he brainstormed, he thought of a way in which he could solve this problem. And he saw that a local material really, really available was laterite, and with his knowledge in chemistry, he was able to come up with this laterite-based eco cement, which is much cheaper than the other cements, and therefore he has reduced the cost of constructing houses. Well, this is invention. 
Next, we have Professor Francisca Neka Okeke, a Nigerian. She has contributed significantly to the understanding of climate change. Climate change is abnormal behavior of the climate. And it happens when we don't handle the environment well. It happens when we throw waste and uh, spoil equipment into the environment. When we do that, it causes it changes in the climate. For instance, it will cause us to be having unusual heat or even changes in the season or even floods like we usually experience in places like, like Duwala. So her research has made us understand climate change a little bit more better and with that we will be able to come up with ways that we can prevent climate change. Dr. Ozak Esu is another Nigerian. The ladies are really doing a lot of work in the domain of research. So please, the ladies, the girls, you are strongly encouraged to do the sciences because if you do, you will also be equally as successful as these ladies we are seeing here. So Dr. Ozak Esu is a Nigerian. She is a world-leading electrical engineer who has contributed in advanced signal processing, that is communication, and also in renewable energy. And she has had several awards like the one you see her holding there in, in the picture. Marie Curie is a lady from Poland, so she's Polish. She discovered radioactivity, and radioactivity has several applications. For instance, radioactivity is applied in the sterilization of medical equipment, also in the industries, in the sterilization of foods. Sterilization means killing of germs. So when they use equipment in the hospital, they use radioactivity to kill or to destroy all the bacteria that are found on the equipment and also industry. When they produce goods like cotton after production, they use radioactivity to kill all the germs on the cotton before they are sent to the market for buying and using by consumers. Radioactivity is applied in the treatment of cancer and tumors. Cancer is the abnormal growth of cells which can spread from one part of the body to the other. Why tumor is abnormal growth but cannot spread? So, radioactivity is used in the treatment of cancer and tumors. Radioactivity is applied in hospitals and industries where radioactive materials are used as tracers in detecting blockages. So what they do is, they send radioactive materials through channels and then they monitor the movement of those radioactive materials. From the movement, they can be able to know whether there's a blockage in the channel or, or not. Radioactivity is applied in a nuclear power plant in the production of electricity. We don't yet have that here in Cameroon. Here in Cameroon, we produce our electricity using hydroelectric power in hydroelectric power plants. We have a nuclear power plant in countries like America. But now we don't even have to have one here in, in Cameroon. Our next scientist is James Watt, a British inventor who invented the steam engine. And the steam engine functions using steam. Steam is simply hot vapor from boiling water. If you have ever been boiling water, in some situations you discover that as you boil the water, the lid of the pot is moved by the vapor. Meaning that steam can cause movement. So this scientist exploited that fact to come up with a steam engine. The steam engine is used in various devices or machines like trains, days of old was made in trains, in ships and even in cars and also in factories. We have Michael Faraday, a British who invented the dynamo or electric motor. There are several appliances at home now that contain dynamos or electric motors. Some examples, we have electric fans, which we use when we are filling heat. We have blenders, which is used in grinding our uh, spices or other things that we wish to use in cooking. We have DVD players, which we use for entertainment. We have generators that help in generating electricity. All those contain motors. Next, here we have 
will be right and of the right brothers, American brothers, who invented the first airplane using air transport. In French, an airplane is called avion. Avion is an abbreviation and it stands for Appareil Volant Imitant L'Oiseau Naturel. Appareil Volant Imitant L'Oiseau Naturel. The translation means a flying machine which imitates a natural bird or a flying bird. So it means that these inventors had their inspiration from observing birds that were flying. You see, so it's very important that as a scientist you always observe. Imagine, just that observation made them to be able to come up with this machine which we use nowadays, which is so important in rapid transportation. Galileo Galilei is an Italian who invented the telescope. And the telescope, of course, is used to see far away objects. The light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison. Imagine life without the light bulb. Or just imagine when you are in the house in the night, the lights on, and then uh, electricity is taken and you have complete darkness. So, this is a very useful invention. It helps in providing security and it also helps us carry on our activities at night. Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit invented the thermometer, more specifically the mercury thermometer. And a thermometer is used in measuring temperature. When we go to the hospital, is what is used to identify our body temperature to, tell, to be able to know whether we are well or not. John Logie Bird, a Scottish from Scotland, he invented the television. See, that was the very uh, first form of television, but now it has evolved to the modern version that we, we now have, like, the, more, like the, the flat screen television. So you see, sometimes when you come up with your invention, other scientists work on that invention to make it better. Charles Babbage, an English inventor, invented the computer. There in that form was called a different machine. But thanks to the help of other scientists like Pierre Giorgio, an Italian, he improved on it and we were now able to get the desktop computer, which you see him holding there in his hands. So you see, this image here is to make us understand that sometimes when you come up with your invention, other people can work on it to make it to be better. There we see an old version of a computer, at that time it was called a different machine, to this new version now of the computer, which is called a personal computer. Alexander Graham Bell, an Italian, invented the telephone, which is used in communication. There, it's a fixed telephone, means you could not move it from place to place. So, Martin Cooper now improved on that fixed telephone to produce what? The mobile phone, which you can now carry from place to place. So, you see, confirm the fact that each time you come up with your invention, another scientist can work on it and improve on it. We have here a Cameroonian. Arthur Zhang, he invented the cardio pad, which is used to monitor the functioning of the heart from a distance. Meaning, a cardiac patient can have that machine in his or her house and is able to communicate with people who are at a health center. So the machine keeps sending information about the activity of the heart to the health center. Then the people at the health center they interpret the information and send back to the patient to advise the patient on what to do in case the heart is not functioning properly. That's happening in Cameroon. From the inventions we have seen so far, we can see that inventions are meant to solve particular problems. 
For instance, Patrick Lemonanila's lateral base eco cement solved the problem of cost of building. The invention of the airplane by Wilbur Wright and Orville Wright solved the problem of transportation. So, inventions always go to solve a particular problem. So, what are the steps or which are the steps which lead to an invention? The first step is that you who has to invent or who is having hopes of inventing one day, you must believe in yourself. You must believe in yourself. Very important. Patrick Lemuna believed in himself before he developed the laterite based cement. Secondly, you have to find a problem which is worth solving. So you must always be thinking, which problem can you identify around you? You must be thinking. Once you identify a problem, you are already one step towards an invention. So always be observing and always be, be thinking. So Patrick Lemuna, he saw the problem of high cost of constructing houses. Step three, find out to be sure that the problem has not yet been solved. Because you could be struggling to solve a problem which another person has already solved. So before you try to invent something, first of all do your research, try to find out if that particular problem has not yet been, been solved. So, uh, Patrick Lemuna, he saw that cheap cement for construction was not yet available in the market. So he searched not see any cheap cement. So you proceed to the next step, we have to proceed to the next step, which is to think of how you can solve the problem. You have to think. He used his knowledge to think of how he could solve the problem. Step five is to think of the materials you can use to solve the problem. He thought of the abundance of laterite and how he could use it to solve the problem. Laterite is soil, a special kind of soil. So he thought of abundance of laterite here in Cameroon and also thought of how he could use it to solve the problem of high cost of constructing houses. Step six is to try to solve the problem using the materials. And of course, he then tried to solve the problem and finally succeeded after a number of attempts. At the beginning of the lesson, the question was asked about who discovered or created electric bulbs, mobile phones, and airplanes. That question and more has been treated in this lesson, where we have seen in summary that a scientist is someone who conducts scientific research to advance knowledge in an area of interest. Some scientists and their contributions to science include Victor Anomangu, who worked on cancer and HIV AIDS, invented Vanivax. We have Patrick Lemugna Ninla. He developed the laterite based eco cement, which is used in building. Marie Curie discovered and worked with radioactivity. Wilbur Wright and Orville Wright, they invented the airplane, showing the importance of teamwork, because the two of them that worked to come up with the invention of the plane. Thomas Edison discovered the light bulb. And then we also saw the steps which lead to an invention. Step one. Believe in yourself. Very important. You know, the first step of anything is always the most important. So you have to believe in yourself. Step two, find a problem worth solving. Next, 
find out to be sure that the problem has not yet been solved. Think of how you can solve the problem. Step five. Think of the materials you can use to solve the problem. And six, try to solve the problem using the materials. Now let's have an exercise that covers all what we have treated so far in the lesson. Question one, who is a scientist? Two, state one characteristic of a scientist. Three, state the names of the scientists who made the following contributions or inventions. A. Discovery of radioactivity. B. Invention of electric bulb. Question 4. State one step which leads to an invention. As for the correction of the exercise, 1. A scientist is someone who conducts scientific research to advance knowledge in an area of interest. 2. One characteristic of a scientist is that a scientist is curious. 3a. Marie Curie discovered radioactivity. B. Thomas Edison invented the electric bulb. 4. One step which leads to an invention is curiosity. Now, as an assignment, Question 1. Who invented the mercury thermometer? 2. State the year in which Professor Victor Anomangu and Patrick Lemugna made their contributions to science. We have now come to the end of this lesson. See you in lesson four, which is the next lesson entitled Career Opportunities in Science. <laughs> Tambianin